Welcome. I'm Bob Amos. I'm an engineer in our physical testing department. In this module, we're going to go over startup procedures and the operator's daily checklist. Step one, check the shelf life. To make sure the adhesive is within the six month shelf life, we're going to check the label on the adhesive drum as well as the label on the activator drum or pail. To check the label, we'll look to make sure we have the correct adhesive for the application and then look in the bottom right hand corner to see the lot number which has a code that indicates the date the batch was produced. This lot number indicates that this batch was made in North Carolina and the year was 2010 and the letter I before the dash indicates that this is the ninth month and the 61st batch of that particular month. To decode the letter into the correct production month, I use a simple trick and count on my fingers. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I is the ninth month, which is September. It's as simple as that. The activator will come either in a pail or a pony drum, and the label is the same. You'll simply check that you have the correct material and decode the lot number that's the same as the code on the adhesive drum. Step number two is to check the product level. The ram is approximately six inches thick, so you'll simply look down inside the drum. This drum is full, however, as you use more material and the ram head gets lower, you'll have to measure to make sure that the top of the ram plate is at least six inches from the bottom of the drum. When the drum is closer to being empty, you may need to use a tape measure and measure it to make sure you have enough material to do the job. Step three, check the oil level and the transfer pump throat. Simply look in the reservoir and ensure that it's at least half full. If it's low, then firmly squeeze the bottle provided until it's full at least halfway. The clear light oil provided is the throat oil, which goes in the reservoir using the squeeze bottle that is shipped with the pump. The oil reservoir on this activator pump is the same as the one on the adhesive pump. Simply make sure both are half full, and while observing the oil level, ensure there's no adhesive or activator mixed in with the oil. Adhesive or activator in the reservoir means the seals are worn and the pumps will need to be rebuilt. Step four is to check the oil level in the airline lubricator. To check the oil in the lubricator, look at the sight glass and see that you have at least an inch of oil. If it's low, unscrew the fill plug, use the darker of the two oils provided that should be filled with air tool oil. Take your air tool oil and squirt it in the hole until the reservoir is full. Replace the plug. Then with the pump running, adjust the drip rate on the oiler until it's dripping about 10 to 12 drips per minute. Step five, inspect the metering pump shafts for leaks. Remove the guard. With the airline disconnected, check the adhesive metering pump and the activator metering pump for leaks. If there's any activator or adhesive leaking out of the shaft, replace the seals. Step six, inspect chains and sprockets. Visually inspect both chains and all four sprockets looking for any obvious wear. Operate the pump and listen for any clicking and popping which might indicate a misalignment or a wear problem. With the airline disconnected, Push on the chain and you should see at least three-eighths to half inch of clay. If the chain tension needs adjustment, loosen the adjustment bolts on either the activator or the adhesive metering pump and turn the pumps until the proper chain tension is achieved. Step seven, connect plan air and check regular settings. To start the unit, you'll connect plan air of at least 100 PSI to the inlet at the air manifold. The air comes into the manifold after going through an air filter and 
di divided and distributed into four different areas. If the pump has never been run before, you'll want to put all the regulators at an initial setting of 50 PSI. If the pump has already been in operation in the plant, you'll just look at each gauge on each regulator and ensure they're set at their normal operating set point. For the main drive, 40 PSI is a good starting point and all the other regulators on the transfer pumps and the adhesive drum ram set them to an initial set point of 50 PSI. To adjust the regulators, to increase the pressure, you'll pull the knob out slightly and turn it clockwise. To reduce the pressure, you'll pull the knob out slightly and turn it counterclockwise until you reach the desired setting. Step eight, check entire unit for leaks and other problems. Check the unit from one end to the other, looking at all the hoses, lines, and pumps, looking for any kind of air or material adhesive or activator leaks, or kinks in hoses, or any other mechanical problems, and correct those before operating the equipment. Step nine, trigger the gun to ensure proper material flow. At this point, you'll put on gloves, remove the mixer tip, remove the mixer tip nut, and trigger the gun into a bucket or waste container and observe the flow of material through the port. What we're looking for is a steady even flow of the A and B components without any sputtering or color changes and a full flow from each orifice the adhesive being larger and the activator being smaller for a 10 to 1 machine. Step 10, install a new or properly clean mixer tip. Remove the mixer nut take a new or properly clean mixer tip, thread the tip through the nut and then thread the assembled mixer tip onto the nozzle. Hand tighten. Step 11, purging and stabilizing operating pressures. Before I start the step, I'm gonna put earplugs in because the transfer pumps can be pretty loud. While we're purging material in order to get out any air and to allow the operating pressures to build up to their normal ranges, I'm going to walk around the unit and look at the pressures on all my gauges. So first I'm going to check my RAM, and it's around 50, which is normal. And then I'm going to check the regulator gauge that goes to the transfer pump. At the same time as I'm purging, I'm also watching the transfer pumps move up and down. So I'm looking for a smooth stroke on the upstroke and the downstroke that are moving at about the same speed on each transfer pump. At the same time, I'm looking for my adhesive to start coming up to the normal darker color operating at its normal mix ratio. Now I'm looking at the activator transfer pump and it is running at about 60, which is within the normal operating range. I'm looking at the transfer pump stroke. The activator transfer pump is stroking normally up and down. The activator will take a little longer because it's a slower flow rate. Once I've observed the activator and adhesive transfer pumps and they're stroking normally, 
at normal operating pressures. Then I will watch the gauges on the output of the metering pumps at the beginning of the adhesive and activator lines. Those pressures will normally increase as the pump gets up to speed. Once they stabilize and stop increasing, I know I've reached normal operating pressures. Because my line pressures have all stabilized. So I'm finished purging because both of my transfer pumps have cycled normally through a full cycle and my line pressures on both hoses have stabilized at a number within my normal operating range. Step 12, run a time bead check. So first I'll purge a little bit of material to get a uniform color. Then I'll start the timer and dispense the test bead. Now that you've dispensed your test bead, while you're waiting for it to cure is an ideal time to go ahead and make all your other preparations for your production run. As you can see, we performed our test bead on a piece of paper covered with mylar. That will ensure proper curing. If you do your test bead on paper or cardboard, it can draw some of the moisture out of the bead and adversely affect the curing time. Step 13, SAG test. The SAG test is an optional test that we recommend if you're going to be doing vertical or overhead bonding. To perform this test, I'll dispense a horizontal bead. You can see on the substrate, I've drawn two horizontal lines and I'm trying to size the bead so it fits between the lines. The size of the lines would match up with whatever you expect your largest bead size to be. Next, if you're going to be doing any vertical beads, you can also dispense a vertical bead. Again, you can see I drew two lines, in this case two inches apart, to simulate the largest two inch wide bead that I would expect to be bonding. Now I'm going to purge until I get a consistent color. And then dispense the horizontal bead. Trying to get the size of the bead to be about the same as the width of the line. Now I'll dispense the vertical bead. And then when I'm done, I'm going to mark the bottom of the bead so I can tell whether, it's, whether it sags or slides down the board. So now I'm marking the bottom of the bead so I can see how far, if any, it sags. Once the bead on the SAG test has cured and exceeded the working time, you evaluate how far the bead sagged or slid down the substrate. In this case, if the bead sagged less than a quarter inch, then you can be confident in using that adhesive combination in vertical and overhead production. Step 14, the final step. Record ambient temperature and operating pressures. It's a good practice to record your ambient temperatures and operating pressures when the system is up and running. This enables you to, to track seasonal effects and also enables you to identify mechanical problems or adhesive problems should they crop up by seeing deviations from the trend. So now I'm recording the line pressures on the adhesive in the activator lines at the output of the metering pumps and I'll record the pressure settings on the transfer pump regulators as well as the adhesive transfer pump regulator and the RAM regulator. This completes our series on operator startup and daily checklists.
If you have any questions or issues, please contact your representative. We'd be happy to help you.